I'm so happy to be back long, long, long overdue. And I'll explain why in a minute with my lovely, lovely friend, Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa 2 and Solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa. How are you doing, Shanti? It's so awesome to see you again. I'm really good. I mean, I was just saying, you know, when we got on and I saw you in your beautiful orange top and I was going to wear mine and then I brought a lovely little orange feather okay. duster today. I just popped out and I was like, okay, I've got the memo anyway and your background. And just really good to see you because you've been away for a while and you've been traveling and gallivanting and I know you've got stuff going on in your lap at the moment as well. So it's really good to see you. Really happy to be back with you, Catherine. Yeah, and for anyone watching this, I have had to reschedule a bit because I had my trip to America and then since then I've had a family member who's been really unwell. And I think if there's one thing that, you know, all this self-development work does, Shanti, is make us realise, you know, we can't talk about community and then not look after those closest to us. And I think Absolutely. there are times in all of our lives where you just need to drop everything and look after whoever, whether it's a human or an animal that needs doing. So I'm still very much in that process at the moment. Hence, I'm a bit hit and miss on my YouTube channel, but luckily people are very understanding. And I'm very grateful that I've set up a lifestyle for myself that I can actually do that. So, but we're going to be talking Absolutely. about something that's so important today. And you, I got this idea about wanting to speak to you about this because I've been watching some of your stuff with um, Caleb on your Aquarius Rising Africa too. And if people aren't watching those, I'll put the, the, the links below. But one of the things I think has been really fascinating discussion for all of us who are watching this is this subject of what is a human being? How many of us are really human? Does it really matter anyway? And how does that affect the decisions and the communication styles that we've got in our lives? And I thought I've got Absolutely. to speak to Shanti about this because it ties in with so many of the videos that you've been doing on your channel. Absolutely. You know, Catherine, I mean, and firstly, I want to just say Caleb is Caleb Jade, in case you guys haven't uh, come across him. Um, he's actually new, he's been on my channel for a month now. Yeah. Uh, but wow, very, very incredible man who has literally been taken into the system, gone through the worst of the worst, very, he's like half Native American, half German, bloodlines, gone through the worst of the worst and uh, been through all the magics that they took him in the system, the military. As he says, there's not a lot I haven't seen. And he's come out and just this well-rounded perspective of life and experience and just having integrated all of that in such an amazing way and now bringing his story out to the world stuff we've never heard before by the way i mean it's really really amazing what he's bringing forth so i want to encourage you guys to certainly catch his show because we all need to know what's going on there but yes you know catherine one of the things i mean i think with you know we we talk about being human right and of course, we all assume that we're human as if we've got two eyes, two arms, two legs, whatever, you know. But that is not necessarily so, as we're discovering as well, because, we, and that makes so much sense to me, because since I've been talking to Caleb, and one of the things, one of the shows we've done is on the Cabbage Patch Kids, right? Um, and I know we've often spoken about this with Bryce as well, the turn of the century, when suddenly this world was in, uh, was filled up with these orphan trains and repopulated. And when you're listening to what went down, that was not long after the mud floods. So literally earth was destroyed, but yeah. there were beings left over and that now live in different dimensions, which is very real. But one of the most fascinating things that we spoke about um, and I finally got it out of him, <laughs> is where these kids come from. Mm. These kids were created by the master magician alchemists, if you will. And so they don't come from parents, right? They are, <clears throat> were created with electricity and matter. That's all I want to say, because it's also too complicated for me to go into, right? 
and grown in false wombs or incubators, right? It's like we see in the uh, matrix. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is, and, it, and this gets really sorted, and I hope you guys will tune in on Sunday, 6 o'clock my time, because we are actually doing a decode on this cabbage patch tree, the yeah. tree that gives birth to the kids with the soul gems and all of the stuff. It is very freaking evil and it is very contrived and it's very clever the way they've done it. But basically, you know, what they've done is they've created humans and because they know how to um, call it extract souls, if you will, right? They then take souls that they've stolen because they can do that. I mean, I was horrified to hear that that is actually possible, but oh boy, it's possible. Um, and then they match that soul to one of these babies. And then these babies were sold or given to these mostly high class <clears throat> families or parents or something like that and that's just what it is in a nutshell so this is where these huge orphan trains and stuff also I'm not saying all of them but a lot of them and you're also hearing comments from people who've, who who telling us stories about their grandmothers you know or their grandparents rather were the orphans and they said they didn't have parents and they came from I don't know where but they there are people telling those stories from those parents right or from and obviously they were made in a way so i everyone we watch this i'm going to put the links to shanti's show with caleb below so please you go on to aquarius rising africa too which would be linked below and look for the, the caleb interviews but they obviously are made in a way that they can reproduce so it's not like um you know if you breed a horse and a donkey and they get they give birth to a mule and then the mule's infertile these are giving these cabbage patch babies effectively are able to reproduce and and um, yes, yes. the earth basically but isn't it spooky yeah. shanti how i don't know if you had them in south africa but when i was a child they bought out cabbage patch dolls yes. Did you have those? yes and i always wanted one and for some I reason one, I, never and I never got one i never yeah, my cabbage... mother refused to get me one and yes, i and and when we start and when we go into the the the, the, the darker aspect of that, and please join us really, yeah. because Caleb is unbelievable with his information. Um, you know, then you then we realize what this adoption thing is and the name and the crystals and all of that stuff, you know, that's coming out of the no, it's crazy. So um yeah, and and yet they are human but they were not birthed from a human which means they don't have the spirit mm. of a human right and i think as us humans understand there's one thing a human being has when you are born of god's light or of the divine or source whatever you choose to call it right um that gives you your consciousness Mm -hmm. or your emotion right or whatever it is and as humans I think the one thing that we realize that we have that other stuff I mean it doesn't mean you don't feel but we have we we we, we have emotion and we have consciousness mm -hmm. and we are able to grow that and as we grow and evolve we become more fuller we become a fuller package uh, when I say emotional it doesn't mean we now I mean emotional has got a bad connotation mostly because it kind of makes us think about a screaming woman or out of control something you know what i'm saying but it really is about feeling and having the ability to feel and to perceive your emotions and understand them in an intelligent way and then have your iq and your eq meet and talk to each other like the husband and the wife right uh, of your body I always say the head is the masculine as long as I can see it feel it yeah makes logical sense boom yeah and when we look at the the body which is the feminine aspect because the emotions are stored in the cells of the body right so the husband as any good husband will often do is like not want his wife to feel bad right so he'll say no don't worry like just leave it we don't talk about it now nah, 
suppress, suppress, suppress. Let's go shopping. Let's go running or whatever, you know. So we get diversion, we get distracted, right? But what it really is, is being able to bring those aspects of ourselves into alignment and grow with compassion, feeling, understanding, um, sentience, right? And as you say, then we can put ourselves in a position where we are able to take care of the ones that we love, right? Even if they've done us wrong, right? Uh, be compassionate to strangers, animals, whatever it might be in life. We have that ability and we grow through it, right? And I think what on the other side, when that is and when, when we're dealing with these fallen creatures that are now taking on human bodies, that's not really a human because it does not have the emotions and the spirit that a human being does. It has a soul, yes. Um, can it talk, laugh? Absolutely. And it can even procreate, right? But and I think that's part of the agenda, the, you know, bringing the hybrids in as well, because when we understand what's happening behind the scenes, there's been a very nefarious agenda in place literally since the fall. And we're understanding more and more with guys like Caleb and Jesse and people like that, who is behind all this stuff and what the agenda really is. So it's such a fine line, but really at the end of the day, in my opinion, it's, it's how we, our ability to feel and our ability to deal with our feelings and not just completely collapse into emotional turmoil and what have you and it doesn't mean that if you don't if you know often we don't deal with our emotions well that doesn't mean we're not human right uh even humans don't deal with the emotions well if we've been hurt or and that's why a lot of the sra stuff is all about pain they want to take away that love feeling they want to inflict torture they want to inf everything that is deranged and depraved yeah. and painful is what they want right and not have that feeling of love, of not wanting to hurt someone else, you know, not going the extra mile for someone else. And really, for me, at the end of the day, that is truly what makes us human, um, our ability to be compassionate. There's so much in there. And I think for people, it's really interesting, because when you look at sort of, excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. Sorry, frog. Must come out. Um, come out. I don't know where that saying comes from. Who knows where it comes from? You've got a frog in your throat. But the reason I think this is so fascinating with this journey that we've all been on and are still on and probably will always be on is we're seeing such division in society and we're seeing that division is very, very obviously being created by <coughs> the evil controllers. However, What's interesting is why some people can hear certain messages, some people can resonate with it. So, you know, you can not agree with something someone said, but understand their perspective and see where it's coming from. And then you get yes. other people where you're just thinking, you know, this is why so many people are so easy to brainwash because they're so far removed from this lack of this life spot that they can't understand that that sort of evil or attitude or psychopath or whatever can exist. So, when we're looking at understanding what's really going on in the world, how do you think what you're finding out now plays into helping us understand why this is great divide? I think, Catherine, you know, I've always said knowledge is power. Hmm. So when we know what we're dealing with, we can then deal, we can then act in accordance with that. We've been duped so much. You know, if we just think about the whole media over the years you know how we be these the subliminal programming yeah you know like when, when we're looking at what's happened i mean there's a lot of alien technology that's coming to play on our planet and that's really been and the you know the, in the beginning i thought nah, nah, mm. but the more we hear i mean the more we understand how previous presidents and stuff have made agreements mm -hmm. with these uh, alien species like right so um to come in and like really sort of take over humanity basically you know first they say well they, they're giving us technology um and for that they want to trade humans like uh, the, whatever it is whatever the dodgy things are that they that they're trading because there's a lot they trade with right 
So we can then see how over time they have turned us into this narcissistic species where we are now disconnected from our families, our, our self, our loved ones, whatever. Technology, your phone, I mean, everyone is just like that. That's become the order of the day. Our kids, that's, that's the first thing they know. What babysits them nowadays? The computer. So yeah. there's, and that has, that has given these controllers the edge because that's how they've been able to pretty much take away our power because we've yeah. given that to them. So in order for us, and this is, and now when we look, especially my opinion is since 9-11 occurred, right? That for me was a major wake up call for the planet. And yeah. especially when we're hearing that 9-11 was not actually what what it was about that was actually because i don't know if anyone watched um too many words because i had a video taken down for that we were well we're oh, okay. big buildings but no because now we've made it twice so i'm just saying i have had a video taken down for talking about okay. it yeah okay sorry about that no that's so, all yeah. right we're fine for that but we just don't do it too many times yeah <laughs> sorry okay, no, no. you know what it's like yeah but what <laughs> yeah, a major absolutely. wake up call what a huge wake up call for so many people yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when we're looking at that and we're understanding how the through that the division has occurred, first it began then, you know, now suddenly we're not trusting people from other countries yeah. because they're terrorists now, you know, and especially the Muslims. Like now suddenly every Muslim, how long was every Muslim viewed with suspicion after that, right? Absolutely. Uh, and then since then it's just been progressively worse, right? And then until, until when the plan happened in 2020 um with this thing and the division that created and how many people passed over during that time and you weren't allowed to go to family funerals or anything uh you weren't allowed to hug your kids your children it was a terrible time for people pain suffering it's all this fragmentation all the separation right this breaking ah uh, away from pain they're creating pain and division divide and conquer is the name of the game but also what's happened is it's woken us up in a major way so those of us who work, have woken up and we're now watching programs like this know and know what we need to do so what we really need to do is get back to basics and you and i have are now in full agreement of this it's getting back to planting your own food um trading food if you need to looking after your community you know we've created a very narcissistic world fast fast foods fast i don't know lots of yeah impatience you know fast foods uh these grab a meal just there's no love going into the family into the cooking and i'm sorry i am a great believer in a family unit and yes here i am single <laughs> <laughs> that's just the way my life has been right but what I am saying is that it is very very important that the family unit as much as what it can will stick together and create that beautiful little unit where you grow you heal you talking to each other again you know you caring you sharing and um, you're doing things you're getting rid of the computer for 90 percent of the day you have your time on it yes technology and stuff like that is very important it's become the way of life nowadays but we have to find that balance you see and more than anything this is our test of faith mm -hmm. you see right now and it's not about a religion necessarily for me it's more spiritual faith to know who we are at this time what is our desire what is our need what do we want to achieve at this time individually in our communities and then of course on a grander bigger scale as well so it's a very interesting time for me it's a time where we're really growing we've got opportunities we've got lots of information there's so much crap out there as well um, but, you know, it's up to us to be discerning and you're not going to be able to discern unless you know who you are and you connect to spirit. Otherwise, you're going to be at all over the show like a lot of people are. Yeah, there's so many good points in there I really want to pick out because one of the things um, I listen to. Bryce's show with I can't remember the guy's name I have to look it up the guy who was in Scientology this week 
And he came up with something absolutely brilliant. The way he broke through from free from Scientology in the end was one of his acting acquaintances. They were not friends at all. They didn't get on at all. There was a lot of competition and jealousy between them. But he gave him some cult books and he was so angry that he read them and the light bulb went off. And, and this is one of the messages I want to say to people because it's certainly been a huge lesson, uh, lesson for me, Shanti. It's like sometimes your biggest lessons come from the most unexpected source. So even on alternative media now, we're seeing so much division. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that. But when you and I are going to be on Shanti's Aquarius Rising Solutions probably next week, talking again yeah. about the four agreements, Don Miguel um, Ruiz, because when you actually put into effect some of those four agreements and you're really understanding that you're seeing life through your lens that be authentic with your word when you actually really take this on board these really simple principles it's not about who the messenger is this is where the whole trump thing this is where the whole um politicians celebrities whatever it is people are so attached to the person rather than the message and if you look at some of our biggest music over the last goodness knows how long, right back to, um, you know, some of the composers centuries ago, when you look at celebrities, when you look at things, there's so much gold you can get from this because sometimes the people that have been exposed to some of the negative stuff are actually sharing the truth greater. So this saying, you know, don't shoot the messenger is so important because even if you don't personally resonate with the person giving the message, there's still the reason why you're getting that message now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, just speaking about what we were talking about with the four agreements, you know, and we are going to do that on solutions next week, next week, Friday. Um, <clears throat> One thing for me is very is very clear. Be impeccable with your word. Um, and that really means don't gossip. Don't speak bad about people. It's as simple as that. If someone gossips to you, you can stop it right there. Because that is like that virus, right? That yeah. goes through everything. And when we, when we learn how to curb our tongue, and, and I always say to people, if you want to speak about others, say cool things. It's not always easy. And if you, if you need to have a, a challenging discussion, it's not what you say, but how you say it. Yes. So, you know, it doesn't mean you've always got to, oh, yes, no, yes, that, that. No, there are people who are assholes out there. We, go, we have to admit that as well. There's no, you know, not everyone is love and light. Not everyone has good intentions. And yeah, some things, sometimes crap things happen, right? But the bottom line is that how do you deal with that? Do you react or do you respond? And therein lies the difference, right? And that responsiveness uh, as opposed to reactiveness will make a big difference, right? Into how we actually live life and how we deal with people and ourselves as well. Yeah. Without using it YouTube friendly words as much as we can, Going back, it's really fascinating this, going back to the stuff that's been coming out in your interviews, uh, you know, for lots of other people as well, going back to are we really human and what that means and does it really matter? If we take a lot of what we would call the Illuminati, the black cats, the evil controllers, whatever you might want to call them, this really plays into it a lot because we've got to understand that in this human vessel that we're all seeing through our limited senses, and obviously we know that's why cats are such a good judge of character, because they see a lot more than we do. Um, yeah. But when we're looking at this, I, I'm trying to think how to ask you this question, but it's basically, okay, so we're all very focused on these people that we feel are controlling us. And in the 3D world, it seems like they are able to control us, or some of us. Mm -hmm. But all of us, to some extent, because I still use a bank and I still have to buy food and I still have to use money and platforms that might not might be censoring me. But going back to the human and the stuff that you're really learning about what's human and that, how does that play into some of these bloodline families, some of the people that are supposedly pulling all our strings? Well, 
there's always a question as to the origins of the controllers, right? Mm. Um, so I think it's very, you know, it's what what I know and what I feel, it's very difficult to ascertain who's human and who's not. Because just because we have two eyes, two arms, two legs or whatever, doesn't ma- mean that our spirit is made up of the same thing. And again, you know, it goes into that because uh, like literally uh, Earth is a planet where humanity, you know, where humanity is is now living, right? So because of that and because of our consciousness, which is what's very attractive to the ones who don't have that. Now we know from that also like what we've, been learning in the last couple of years, right? We know that when when these guys have come in, they are not human. They do not have our consciousness. Yeah. But they've tried to emulate that. Or, you know, it's actually very interesting. It's very fascinating. And just on this point, because some someone said something to me the other day and it really actually made a lot of sense, is that we as humans have the ability to manifest, right? We are amazing manifestors. These guys can't manifest. So what they do is they put it out there for us. And when we see it, yeah. we manifest it. That's uh, so true. I want to really reiterate this to everyone. This is so, so true. It's exactly. So, so they're using us to manifest their will. That's how it plays in. We are so being I gave used. one of my daughter a mug when she was a little child. And I always thought, you complete weirdo. What a thing to give a nine-year-old, which said evil genius. But I've kept it because all the way through my awakening journey, it's like evil genius. As we always say, these people are not stupid. There aren't many things, but that stupid is not one of them. Very, and very this clever. Is where I find this so fantastic when we're looking at you and I are also going to be having some discussions. I'm going to be inviting you back on the whole Gnostic traditions and and alchemy and things, because you can take the principles and apply it, which is what they're doing a lot better than most of us, because some of these woo-woo things like manifestation have been given, you know, it's so easy to put it as a conspiracy or a spiritual woo-woo or whatever, because that's what they want us to feel without realizing that they're brainwashing us into manifesting what they want all the time. Exactly. And that means, and how they do that, okay, is by is by controlling us through poverty consciousness. Yeah. Right? So uh, we are born into poverty consciousness, 90% of us. Look at that. Even more than 90% of us. Look at the world, right? What is the world always calling for? Money. Why? Because money gives us freedom and it enables us to fly and go to places and clothe ourselves and it's true it does and we always find money an issue right Mm -hmm. most most people have got an issue with money money is used to control but by the same token i want to point this out money is energy absolutely it is simply energy just like law of attraction is it has no emotion it is energy you are either going to place yourself in alignment with that and it's going to work for you or you're going to place yourself in a place against that that's according to your emotions now these guys know how they, and, and as you say Catherine which is so true there is no um these guys are super 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 smart but yeah. they are devoid of emotion they want to kill they want to fight they want to control think steampunk when we're looking at ai mecca I mean, that's something that Caleb Jade actually said to me. He said to me, before we even started doing the shows, I was trying to figure this out with him one night. I was like, how? And he said, think steampunk. And I went, boom, got it. Because that is literally the AI mecha. That energy, those entities are what is using us to create loosh our energy, our loose, right? So that when we are in fear, we create less for ourselves, right? We are contained within that, but our fear and our pain is their loose. So they feed on that. It's what gets, because they enjoy fear and pain. They enjoy controlling with money. They enjoy having it. We are like vermin to them. 
We are not like even cattle. Cattle have a purpose, right? And you to them, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to, before I forget it, so I've had so little sleep the last few weeks, before I forget, this is why they're doing certain things to normalise ways of eating animals that have endured such horrendous suffering. Because without mentioning the actual word that shall not be said on this platform, when you produce adrenaline and that fear hormone, and we know that carries through, and there's so much inversion of all these different areas of our life. And coming back to what you said, this is why I love your show. This is why I love our little group so much. This is why I love our listeners so much, because... Do we look like we're in fear? No, we're not. Do I slip into it sometimes? Of course I do. But the whole point is knowledge is very different to learning. So learning is like a bit of a tick box and you can go to university and get your degree and you can do this course and get that. But knowledge is a never ending journey of, of integrating and moving forward and testing it out. It's like, like to me, the whole of life is a science lab where you've got this hypothesis and you work with it and you test it out. And if not, you move on to the next one and the next one. And, and you cannot, when we're talking about these things, which is why there's so much censorship, you're massively taking the power away because once Absolutely. it's no longer hidden, the effectiveness Absolutely. goes. It's like if you've got two football teams on the on the thing if one of them's listening to the team talk and knows exactly the strategy the other team are going to uh, you've taken away uh, their competitive advantage exactly exactly and that is why i say knowledge is power and it's not the power that they wield over us the power that we have is kindness it's compassion it's the ability to discern it's the ability to understand that what I have within me, I have the ability to trans to transcend whatever is going on, to raise my frequency to the point that that is not affecting me anymore. So the more and more of us who raise our frequency or our consciousness, because they literally after our consciousness, right? Yes. They don't have their own consciousness in the way that we do. So they use us for our consciousness. And that's how they manifest what they want, creating fear, da, 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 da. We know that I've just been down that road. Um, and therefore, they'll keep us in submission. They'll keep us doing, as you said, awful things, the pain. I mean, what happens in slaughterhouses every single day of, on this planet is anyone who doesn't think that is a sacrifice needs to think again. And if you are part of that, that, that uh, um, consciousness, Please let's think again. That's all I'm saying. Mm. We are unknowingly contributing to these things. And we shout and scream about what they're doing to our kids. Yet look, what are we doing to their kids? I mean, I'm talking about animal kids now. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You know, um, this is a... So, so, sorry, come on. No, no, carry on. Well, this is where, this is all this tangled web, you know, this, uh, the, you know, all the tangled web we weave um unless we practice to deceive and this is a thing as well unraveling this web all the times and sometimes we're going down a dead end and then coming back but this is why we talk about asking questions asking questions asking questions and and I'm I've got a lot better over the last few years I, I really have I will put myself in the head for this about not being attached to who's giving the message so much Yes, and don't keep the really, messenger, take the message. Yeah, it's really moved me forward so much more because it's so easy to be, but I always say, you know, Wayne Dyer, one of his favourite sayings that he used to say, because it's so true, is people will find a hundred things each day to be offended about. So where's your attention going? Are you looking to sort of say, no, I'm going to take that that need to be offended and need to be right away from it and I'm going to really open myself up to seeing what the message is here and why it's coming to me now or am I going to stick in that vibration of being offended and needing to be right all the time exactly exactly and it's like it, it's so true I mean I love Wayne Dyer I mean uh, really you know he was one of the really really amazing people on this planet so i mean anyone does know when dyer please go look him up he's just cool you know just the way he, he expresses voice is such a beautiful frequency just hearing him talk as well and um yeah, that, that's that, that, like, that calming and yeah. you know that's another thing about being human by the way 
um, as you mentioned that, it's really the sound and the vibration in someone's voice. When you are attuned to that, you feel their truth. Yeah. You know, and it's not about what they say, because anyone can lie. They can tell you lies. Sometimes people don't even know that they're lying. But it's the vibration in the voice that the energy that carries their words. You feel the truth. And Wayne Dyer is certainly one of those, right? Where, where you know, the more <clears throat> we are able to be less offended and become more neutral and understand that even though something is happening that you don't like, it doesn't mean you've got to condone it. It means you certainly can uh, have your opinions, you know, but do what you can to shift it from your side. Watch your reaction to things. If things are, if you're reacting to things and you're offended by everything that's happening around you, well, then you're the common denominator. So what in you makes you so offensive? right? Because I'm sure you'd be offensive to others. Hey, I'm offensive to a lot I, of people. I, I am. I, I can see all these people, the ones that know me, offended me and everything. I, I've got very funny story that to things. So um, my mother had to be taken off by ambulance in an emergency this week. And this is a lesson to be really thankful. If you're lucky enough to have a human or an animal in your life, that gives you really honest feedback. Grab that with both hands. So my mum's got a rescue parrot and I got on really well with her rescue parrot. We've got a very good relationship. But the rescue parrot, Marla, is very attached to my mum, very attached. And when he saw her going off in the ambulance, he found it very, very stressful. And when I then went to change his water and food, he bit me. And it was just his stress coming out because he'd been... And this is what I mean. Now, there is a purpose to this for what we're talking into, because your your energy, when you tune into that vibration of someone's voice or the energy, the aura that they're giving off, animals are expert at telling us. So, you know, so many people saying, I am calm. It's not me stressing my dog out. It's not this. But they always tell us and they're our biggest teachers, because when we can then learn to step back and control that energy and and listen to it so I was really grateful when he bit me because I didn't blame him at all because I'd been worried sorting out the dogs and everything and I forgot to ask him if he was okay and a true story then when I talked to him and sort of said oh you know Marla sorry that must have been really stressful for you seeing all this he really calmed down so this energy oh, animals absolutely. are perfect for us and if you have got that honest friend that is working on themselves enough to be saying it from a really heartfelt place but you know we sometimes we we're going to take the the next step up just like the guy that Bryce was interviewing I'll get his name and put the interview below he's absolutely brilliant that interview is brilliant you know if you've got someone that you might not like personally but is going to give you a real gift to get you up to the next stage of your learning evolution whatever you want to do it just just accept it and and be grateful for wherever that message comes from absolutely absolutely it's like it's don't shoot the messenger i yeah. remember uh, i know i've told the story before but when i was in india doing my yoga teacher training um swami who was head of our ashram right he wasn't doing the yoga himself we had other yoga instructors but he was kind of head of the ashram and he would do our lectures and what have you with us and I'll never forget um, the last night we were at satsang and there was a whole lot of questions and answers, right? And I remember him saying, the man, the man might fall, but the teachings remain pure. And for something I, I rem and some, for some reason I remembered that. And man wasn't, in fact, in fact, before, we actually left, I think the day we left, or no, it was actually we were home already, so maybe two weeks after, um, the big reveal came that Swami was not as pure as what he as what he put himself out to be, right? I mean, Swami was doing all sorts of dodgy things with his Japanese chef <laughs> while we were in satsang. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and of course, everyone is in judgment about that and like that. Da, da, da. And there were a couple of us, you know, and I just said, and I immediately thought, and I said, isn't it interesting 
that Swami said to us on the last night we were there, the man might fall, but the teachings remain pure. So forget that Swami fell. He fell, and that's his journey. But Swami was the best teacher, one of the best teachers I've ever encountered. <clears throat> the way he would um, interpret, you know, the 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 yogic sutra, the yoga sutras and stuff like that was amazing. And he gave such a brilliant, clear explanation to everything, which oh. made such a great, gave me such great impact in my life, you know. And um, bye, gift, happy birthday. <laughs> the garden, the gift, the um, uh, um, Malawian uh, garden, um, I love him. He's so cool. It's his birthday today. So he's going off and um, for the afternoon. Anyway, so that is that is really something which I think is so incredible, is that he was able to give us a lot of information that we were, especially as Westerners, because remember when you when you're learning an Eastern teaching, for example, um, I mean, you look at kids who are born in India. I mean, they're sitting on the floor. They're in lotus position, right? Their hips are different, everything. They can do these crazy yoga uh, postures and things, but the Westerners really have to, like, ease our way into it, right? So it was like he had a brilliant gift of teaching us how, as Westerners, how to integrate that and what it truly meant. So I will always be grateful for that. And... I love Swami, you know, to this day, I have really good feelings about him. I remember he used to give us like, uh, we had to do assignments and things. And man, he would give us the craziest thing. And it made me think so deep. Mm -hmm. And I would then give the assignment in and he'd write a note back like two pages long. And we would discuss certain topics. It was just really, really cool. He gave me a lot of, but the one thing, for example, like they were talking is that you know, they don't ever talk about the cells in the body or the emotions. It's all in the mind. And I'm going, yes, but you're forgetting something. And we had great conversations around the feminine aspect of the teachings as well, which many of them don't yeah. apply uh, or comply with. So that was super. That's why I say that guy, I've never had teachers. I haven't had teachers. But for those five weeks or whatever it was that I was there, six weeks, I think, um, it was really great to have him as a sounding board of someone really spiritually that's knowledgeable and is a great teacher. But he told us, the man yeah. is falling, but the teachings will remain pure. And I took that. And I want to, I always say that, uh, say that to people because take what you need and leave the rest behind. Oh, I love know? that. Yeah. Mm. Perfect. Well, I think we've probably um, run out of time for today, but I really want to hear what this has triggered for anyone who's watching us. Please do let us know because we are going to be back for some more regular chats now. So next week, yes, we'll definitely. be on Solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa and we'll be talking about one of my favourite, favourite, favourite books of all time, The Four Agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz and Don Jose Ruiz. Um, and then Shanti would be coming back to me and I will put the links to your videos and Bryce's videos below because they link in really, really nicely to this. Any final words, Shanti? Be human. <laughs> you know, um, laugh, cry, enjoy, you know, smile. I mean, today when I was out, it was just so nice. Man. There was a car guard. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, when you go to the shopping center, the African people that really have very little money. They will stand in the car. I mean, you're standing in the in the you know parking lot, but they'll direct you into the parking bay. Not that you need it, but obviously they're trying to earn a bit of extra bucks. And afterwards I came out and I did some shopping and I had I'd had my bus, my trolley with two plastic baskets in the shopping list. And I don't like to leave that outside because I often get stolen. I like to take it back and I was, oh, I'm in a rush. And I looked around and as I came there, the guy arrived and he took my trolley. I said, oh, thank you. And I said, let me give you something. So I gave him a nice tip. And he said, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. And I said, and I really appreciate you. Thank you. That was really cool. You came just in the nick of time. Do you know the smile on his face? Just to hear me say, I appreciate him. Yeah. 
I could see the difference it made in him. Just words like that. And when I drove off, he was standing there waving at me with the biggest smile on his face ever. And for me, that's what it is to be human. You know, try and lift someone up when you can. And it's not even about, oh, I must lift that person up. It's just a smile, a gesture, a kindness. I mean, like, what I actually did with him today, instead of maybe you giving him a normal five or a 10 buck, whatever, you know, I have in my wallet, I said, I've got a hundred bucks. Boom. There you go. That's your tip. Yeah. He was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So if you can afford to give a little bit more when you can do it, it'll come back to you, you know, and the more we understand this, you know, we're so fearful. That's the whole thing. We're so, we're so fearful of giving mm -hmm. because we're going to give away everything we have. But let's look at this. That's your hand. When you're holding on to things and you don't want to give it away, right? You're not opening your hand to receive at the same time. You're closing your hand from receiving. And this is what I want to say. Open your hand. Give, receive, give, receive. When we understand that that is a natural process of life, we won't feel fearful not to share what we have with others, not to... Not to um, help when we can right and listen i'm guilty i'm not always there when people i mean i you know like no not today they, whatever you know but it, i've become more and more conscious of over the years and it's a beautiful thing when you can just give someone a little bit extra when you know they need it makes such a difference it. yeah because their energy lifts then which means they receive more yeah. things from others as well right so it's not just what they got from you but it's what they're now opening themselves up to receive from others as well so it's for me that's what it's right. so everyone watching this let us know what it means to you to be human and um yeah. we'll be back <laughs> bye yeah. thank you thank you Shanti. thank you everybody. thank you Kat. it was awesome have a great day guys Thank you so much for taking the time to listen and if you feel inspired please do share with your friends and family my goal is to inspire as many people as i can to live their best lives to stay curious and to raise their consciousness and that of the collective so to do this i need to reach as many people as possible and this needs your help if you feel drawn, would you be willing to share your favourite episode with five different people? This helps us spread the word and also helps me encourage some exciting new guests to take part in this podcast. If you feel drawn to do that, I will be very, very grateful. All the links and discount codes where applicable for all the products that I support are on my two websites, katherineedwards.life and katherineedwardsacademy.com. All of the products are personally tried and tested by me, my family and my clients. And finally, please do press the follow or subscribe button, depending which platform you're listening on. And above all, stay curious and stay free. <laughs>